The KH-9, commonly known as Big Bird or Keyhole 9, was a series of photographic reconnaissance satellites launched between 1971 and 1986. After gathering important information about missile sites, ammunition, ships, and aircraft from Chinese, Soviet, and other foreign territories, the satellite would drop its film rolls in recoverable capsules that were then caught in mid-air by C-130 aircraft or retrieved manually after landing in the ocean. On its first mission, one of the film buckets containing highly confidential information sank 16,400 feet deep into the Pacific waters. Its recovery led to a secret mission that tested the Navy's deep-sea recovery abilities like never before. From 1959 to 1972, the Corona Satellite Program, operated by the CIA and the U.S. Air Force, oversaw almost a dozen reconnaissance missions photographing and surveilling the USSR, China, and other targeted regions with its low-resolution camera. After years of successful service, the National Reconnaissance Office began developing a replacement for the Corona satellites. The objective was to be able to search larger areas with a medium-resolution camera. The KH-9 Hexagon became the NRO's newest recon satellite. It carried two main cameras, and subsequent missions also accommodated a mapping camera. For most of its journeys, the satellite would require four re-entry vehicles, with a fifth added for operations that included the mapping camera. Upon flying over the desired reconnaissance area, the Kodak photographic film from the two cameras would be sent back to Earth in recoverable re-entry vehicles. After enduring the re-entry heat, the bucket would deploy a circular parachute and slow its descent. The capsule would then be caught mid-air by a U.S. Air Force aircraft using a claw-like device. The capsules were also designed to land in the middle of the ocean. To avoid being stolen by other nations, a salt plug in the base would dissolve within two days, and the film would sink. From September 1966 to July 1967, the Hexagon Subsystems contractors were selected. Lockheed Missiles and Space Company was awarded the contract for the satellite basic assembly, and McDonnell was chosen to develop the re-entry vehicle. Other contractors, such as Perkin Elmer and RCA Astroelectronics Divisions, were selected for different subsystems. The Hexagon had a 1,350-pound film supply, the largest of any other American satellite ever created at the time of its construction, and over 1,000 people worked on its development. The Hexagon's ground testing was completed in May of 1971. The satellite was then shipped to Vandenberg Air Force Base in California aboard a massive 70-foot container. On June 15, 1971, the first Hexagon mission was launched. Five days later, the first bucket containing over 40,000 feet of valuable film separated from the Hexagon and re-entered Earth over the Hawaiian recovery zone. According to several C-130 Hercules pilots responsible for conducting the film's mid-air recovery, the capsule's parachute malfunctioned, and they witnessed how it landed on the water. Luckily, a set of divers retrieved the capsule before it sank. Imagery received from this first bucket covered more than 60% of all known Soviet missile sites. A set of photographs taken as the hexagon flew over Albania also allowed the identification of the country's entire inventory of aircraft and ships. Six days later, on June 26th, a second bucket containing 52,000 feet worth of film footage was successfully caught by an aircraft. On July 10th, a third bucket's parachute malfunctioned, and the 1,100-pound capsule hit the ocean, sinking 16,400 feet upon impact. Accounts vary on what actually happened, and crew members waiting in ships and aircraft reported contradictory signals to each other. A helicopter crew spotted the drogue parachute with the strap hanging off, indicating that the main capsule had become detached while on re-entry. The men saw the object hit the water and then sink. When ship crews arrived at the area, they discovered discolored water from a location dye marker and bubbles without debris. Because of the parachute issues encountered on the first buckets and the third capsule's apparent loss, hexagon operators placed 50% less film roll aboard the fourth and final bucket to reduce its weight. On July 16th, the bucket was safely recovered, reporting no issues. Even though the first KH-9 hexagon mission was considered an astounding success, losing the third capsule was disappointing. However, a sudden possibility of recovering the device brought new hope. During one of the tests run by Eastman Kodak during the Hexagon Project test trials, a 10,000-foot sample film roll was sunk into simulated Pacific seawater at deep sea-like pressure. The team found that the sample was still usable after five days underwater. As soon as the KH-9 hexagon mission was over, NRO officers began pondering the idea of recovering the third bucket. The value of the recovered footage was worth the risk. An Army major working for the NRO sent a message to the Undersecretary of the Air Force and Director of the Office, John L. McLucas, summarizing the importance of retrieving the bucket, no matter the cost. He stated that, quote, The potential gains from the recovery of RV-3 would far outweigh the moderate funding required. It is appropriate that an attempt be made. In a July 27th meeting, 
CIA Hexagon Sensor Subsystem Program Director Donald Patterson concluded that recovering the third bucket was feasible. It was highly likely that the film would still be usable, albeit with a slight degradation. In late July, the NRO began developing a plan to retrieve the bucket with the help of the U.S. Navy. Together, they planned a bold rescue mission that would become the deepest underwater operation of its kind ever conducted. To ensure the highly classified payload safety and keep sunlight from damaging the film, the capsule would have to be retrieved at nighttime. At 120 feet before reaching the surface, a team of divers would cover the object with dark fabric before transferring it to a ship. According to high intelligence officials, the operation was a win-win for both the Navy and the NRO. The decision to attempt the retrieval stemmed from both the film's high intelligence value and further exploring the capability of deep oceanographic recovery. To accomplish this goal, the Navy would use their state-of-the-art Trieste II deep-sea vehicle. On November 3, 1971, the Trieste II team began searching for the sunken capsule around the area where the parachute landed. Although they detected several sonar signals, they could not find the bucket and aborted the mission after 10 hours. Bad weather delayed a second search operation, but it finally happened on November 30th with additional Navy support. On the way down, the Trieste II operators encountered mechanical problems, as well as a malfunctioning Doppler sonar. Although the team was finally able to spot the sunken bucket, the technical issues rendered the submarine incapable of retrieving it. After two days, the mission was called off. In January of 1972, Hexagon Program Manager Colonel Frank S. Buzzard sent a message to NRO Staff Director Colonel David D. Bradburn, expressing his concerns over not performing a third attempt. Buzzard speculated that the Soviets most likely knew that the Americans were trying to retrieve the item from the bottom of the sea. If neglected, the Soviets could recover it, as they already had the capability to reach objects as deep as 33,000 feet. According to Buzzard, the Russians had, quote, the same territorial rights in the ocean as we. If we abandon the site, they can move in. We should not abandon the site until our objective is achieved. If we abandon the site without achieving the objective, we should perform all actions that make it appear as if we have retrieved. On April 25, 1972, the Trieste II recovery team attempted a third and final dive to recover the film bucket. After a two-hour descent and a three-and-a-half-hour search, they sighted a massive metal and wires along with two jagged gold foil pieces. Then, finally, the team spotted the missing capsule embedded in the sea floor. When the team recovered the item and sent it to the surface ship to be analyzed, only the bucket's upper stage remained intact. The retrieved film stack underwent extensive analysis at Eastman Kodak. It was determined that the recovery vehicle broke apart as it crashed into the water, and not due to prolonged exposure to seawater, depressurization, or the ocean floor's high pressure and low temperature. Only 25 feet of film was recovered from the bucket. Although the film roll from the third bucket was mostly lost, the recovery mission achieved another purpose. It shed light on Navy deep-sea recovery expeditions. The Hexagon's film recovery missions were among the boldest intelligence and underwater exploration operations of their time. Out of the 20 subsequent launch attempts by the National Reconnaissance Office, all but one were successful. Throughout the KH-9 Hexagon program's life, the individual satellite's durability increased steadily. The final hexagon was launched in April of 1986 and operated for 275 days. In 2011, the KH-9 satellite program was declassified, and several documents and footage obtained from the device were revealed to the public. After receiving the footage from the first KH-9 hexagon mission, the director for the National Photographic Interpretation Center at Kodak's Film Processing Center sent a message back to the NRO that said, quote, My God, we never dreamed there would be this much this good. <laughs>